Alright, Shalom. Kahalayala, Yahweh Bashim, now Shah Bashim, Rakaha Kodash, Double Honest to the Apostles and the Elders of Great Millstone, who will teach well. Much peace, love, and salutation to all brothers doing this work in truth and sincerity. Shalom. This is the Brother Batak back again through the Spirit with another lesson. Lord willing to be edifying. Um, as you can see, I have what pulled up before you um, the scripture. No, not the scripture. The word omnipotent. Now, the word um, omnipotent means almighty, possessing infinite power because we believe in a power, a God that is able to do any and everything, you know. Um, and and we don't we don't call upon the Lord's name in vain, you know. And the heathens, the other nations, they don't understand that there is a God in Israel, the true God. That is able to do anything. So the word omnipotent means almighty, possessing infinite power. Almighty is, is not the Lord name, Lord Yahweh Almighty. You know, this is all powerful. Um, it's from directly from the Latin uh, omnipotent, which means all powerful, almighty. Because the word om, omnis is all, and potence means powerful. So the Lord is all powerful. So, you know, and through this lesson, I'm going to get some precepts to back up what the scripture says. What well, that backed up that definition. Luke chapter 1, verse 30, 37. It says, for with the most high, nothing shall be impossible. You know, so there's no such thing as something being impossible. You know, because with Yahweh Hashem Al Shah, it is possible. And that's and that's the message. You know, that's that's what we come to tell you. We le we believe in a God that is able to do any and everything, man. You know, if he created the heavens, he created the sun, he created the moon, he created the stars. How hard is it for him to do the simplest things, you know? And we we have we have faith in the Lord. He can raise you from the dead. Genesis 18 and 14. It says, Is anything too hard for Yahweh? At the time appointed, I will return unto thee. According to the time of life, and Sarah shall bear a son. Because this is when um, uh, Yahweh Shai, which is, you know, the angel, came to Abraham, and Abraham and Yahweh Shai told Abraham that he was going to return unto him, you know, um, that he was going to have a child, and he was going to have a son, which that son was, you know, Isaac, which we know, we believe Isaac through the Spirit is Yahweh Shai. He said he was going to return unto Abraham and he shall bear a son. And, you know, um, and um, they didn't believe, you know, Sarah laughed that because she was in old age. There was an old age when they had Isaac, you know, so that's the reason why, you know, that he's he said is anything too hard for you. Because they laughed. They didn't believe that the Lord actually would do it. And now that's just one example. Another example is when. Um. Um, the John the Baptist was when the angel came into John John the Baptist's father. When John when the angel came to John the Baptist's father and told him that he was going to have a son, um, um, he didn't believe. So um, the Lord, <laughs> the Lord uh, had him mute until the word came to pass because. T to not believe what the Lord say he's going to do, to not believe that, you know, to not believe what he said he was going to do, to not trust in him and have faith in him, it's like an offense, you know. The Lord don't take that lightly. He gets uh, he, he gets angry when you when you don't you really deny his power and you really don't think he's going to do it. You know. Jeremiah 32 and 27. Behold, I am Yahweh, the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? You know, because, you know, time and time again, our people have had the lack of faith in the Lord. 
They don't really believe in the power of the Almighty, man. Until the Lord has to show us his power. And we're going to witness the power of Yahweh Bashan al Shah in these last days. And he's going to accomplish and he's going to do everything that he prophesied to do through his holy prophets. You know, so the Lord is going back to Luke 1 and 37. The Lord is able to do any and everything. Now, let's go to a scripture that has the actual word omnipotent in it. And you know what? I was thinking about it. Let me see. Let me look at it in the Greek. In the NLT. Let me see what it says. Revelation 19 and 6. Let me see. Let me read it. It says, then I said, then Revelation 19 and 6 in the NLT. Then I heard again with what sounded like the shout of a voice cried or, or the roar of a mighty ocean. Waves of the crash of thunder praise the lord for the lord your our power the almighty now remember that word omnipotent means almighty now let's go let's look up that word um omnipotent it's from the greek word strong's g 3841 pantakrator Pantakrato. Pantakrato. <laughs> it says, he who holds sway over all things. That's a good definition. <sighs> so like you. Dealing with a little bit of mucus in my system. Okay, it says, he who holds sway over all things. And that's who, that's who the Heavenly Father, Yahweh is, man. He holds sway. Let's see what the word sway means. It says move, go, go quickly, move along, carry. Uh, let's see. Hmm. Okay, it's a good figurative, figurative sense. Cause to be directed toward one side, prejudice, and that's exactly what the Lord is doing with Israel. You know, he's he's um. He's a lot. He's being prejudiced towards Israel because he want who to win Israel. He's giving Israel the sway. <laughs> that's, hey, that's a beautiful definition. OK. Um, oh, another a synonym for sway is influence. You know, so Yahweh Bashmael Shah has a heavy influence in the earth. Now, another definition would be uh, sway. It says rule, govern, dominate, control, direct, guide. And that's exactly what the Heavenly Father Yahweh is. Okay, it says from the noun, jurisdiction, rule, government, um, sovereignty, dominion, control, command, power, authority, domination, ascendancy. So that's what Yahweh Bashim al says. Okay. Okay. Down here where it says phrase, it says hold sway, hold power, wield power, exercise power, rule, be most powerful, be in power, be in control, predominate, have the ascendancy, have the greatest influence, have the upper hand, have the edge, have have slash hold the whip hand <laughs> to inform or run the show, be in direct be in the driver's seat, be in the saddle. And that's what the Heavenly Father has. He has sway. So all of those definitions are beautiful. Okay, he who holds sway over all things. The ruler of all, almighty power. Okay. It says, all ruling God as absolute and universal sovereign, almighty, omnipotent. Um. He who holds sway over all things, the ruler of all almighty. And, you know, as you can see, almighty is mentioned many times because it's synonymous with the word uh, omnipotent. Almighty and synom synom um, almighty and omnipotent are synonymous. I'm saying that word so wrong. They're, they're one and the same. Synonymous with each other. If I believe I'm saying that word right, forgive me. <laughs> um, 
Let's go to Sirach, book of um, Sirach, chapter eighteen, or Ecclesiastes, chapter eighteen. Is it eighteen? It's actually nineteen. Nineteen and um, start at eighteen. Sirach eight nineteen and eighteen. It says, "The fear of the Lord is the first step to be accepted of Him, and wisdom obtaineth His love." So, um, the fear of the Lord is the first step to Yahweh Bashmel Shah. Now, I want to bring out this real quick precept because those who are in the power seat, they must fear the Lord. You know, and um, Esau, Edom, the so-called white man, he does not fear the Lord. This is 2 Samuel chapter 3. No, is it 23? 2 Samuel 23. I think it's 23. 23 and 3. Yeah, I think so. 2 Samuel chapter 23, verse 3. You know, I'm going to start in one. It says, now these be the last words of David. David, the son of Jesse said, and a man who was raised up on high, the anointed of the most high of Jacob, the power of Jacob and the sweet psalmist of Israel saying, because the who put King David in the position that he was in, Yahweh, Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh, the heavenly father did, man. you know, because the Lord has omnipotence he can put whoever he wants in the power seat man. because the lord is in control of everything this is why we don't worry about what esau is going to do because we trust in the heavenly father we know that the lord is the one that conducts everything that goes on you know verse two the spirit of yahweh spake by me and his word was in my tongue the power of israel said the rock of israel spake to me he that ruleth over men must be just, ruling in the fear of the Most High. So that really backs up what is talked about in the book of Sirach, chapter 19. The, the fear of the Lord is the first step to be accepted of him, and wisdom obtaineth his love. You know, so the fear of the Lord is the first step. You can't be no king. Well, a true, righteous, just king if you don't fear the Lord. And that's what Esau is not. He does not fear the heavenly father. He actually, he hates the Lord, you know, because he's the seed of wickedness. So that right there back. So I'm going to read that again. Psalms, no, 2 Samuel 23 and 3. The, God, the power of Israel said, the rock of Israel spake to me. He that ruleth over men must be just ruling in the fear of the Lord. So why does the scripture say that? Because the, the wicked are the exact opposite. They rule with uh, uh, with mercilessness. Mercilessness. Um, so right, uh, here it is. Proverbs 28 and 15. As a roaring lion and a raging bear, so is a wicked, wicked ruler over pe poor people. And that's exactly why the ruler of a people must be just. Because if he's wicked, he's going to rule like a roaring lion, like a raging, raging bear. You know, like a, it's like a maniac, you know. And that's how Esau rules over the earth. He's an unfit ruler. He destroys the people. He destroys everything. Sirach 10 and 1. A wise judge instructed his people. And that's Esau not no wise judge. He lies to the people. He he creates psyops and um, tricks the people. Have people um, falling towards his medium, which is the media. You know, spreading lies, hypocrisy, spreading, spreading all kinds of bullshit, not telling people what's really going on in the world. You know, and not telling people, you know, casting the wool over their eyes, man. Deceiving the whole world. Because that's how Esau rules, by deception. He, so he's not instructing his people. If he was instructing his people, they, they would be keeping the law, such as commandments, but they're not. It says, the, and the government of a prudent man is well ordered. And we can clearly see the government of Esau is not well ordered. It's, this government is not well ordered at all. Verse 2, as the judge of, of the people is himself, so are his officers. So if the judge is wicked, then the people are going to be wicked. And the officers are going to be wicked. It says, and what manner of man the ruler of a city is, such are all they that dwell therein. It's another scripture that says something like that. 
Let me see. It's in Proverbs. Here it is. Proverbs 29 and 12. If a ruler hearken to lies, all his servants are wicked. So Esau is all about lies, man. He's all about deception. He's all about confusion. You know, Sirach 10 and um, verse 3. Let me write that precept down. Proverbs 29 and 12, I think. All right, I was done in 2 Samuel anyway, so I'm going to go ahead and um, Proverbs 29 and 12. Yeah, I already got that highlighted. Um, Sirach 10 and verse 3. An unwise king destroyed his people, and that's what Esau is doing. He destroyed the people of America. They're strung out on drugs. They're, they're, um, they're strung out on drugs. They had a dependency upon the government assistance. You know, they they destroyed because by way of the food. They destroyed by way of religion. They were destroyed destroyed by way of homosexuality. This everything that's that consists of America. You know, the feminism, feminism, abortion. You know, all of these things are destroying the people because they don't have wise counsel. Wise counsel only comes from the bible you know and these people in the world they don't have wise counsel because they don't listen to the bible because what the ruler of america does not listen to the bible so they follow whoever's in power you know the people are nothing but herds of sheep what is that saying the um they got their sheeple they're they're sheeple they're docile if you look up the word sheep which i'm gonna do right now real quick through the spirit because i looked up this word before now the word sheep. Um, I'm trying to um, look, find my point. Mm, no, nah, that's not up there. Okay. It says from old English as a type of timid, timid, timidity, and figuratively of those under the goddess of the Most High. The the meaning stupid, timid person. Let me see. So the people are sheep. I mean, they're, they're stupid. <laughs> the people are stupid. Uh, they follow after. Let's see. I could have sworn it was a definition that was explains docile. Because that's what a sheep is, docile. And that's what that describes people. Oh, here it is. This, the number two definition A person who is too easily influenced or led And that's the Americans The people that consist of America They're docile, they're easily led Because of who's in power The ruler Because of Esau They're easily led to do what? Wickedness Do as thou wilt shall be the whole of the law And that's what he pushes upon the people Do as you will But when you break my commandments You break my laws Then I'm going to put you in jail but Esau, you you don't keep not one law of the heavenly Father. Now a sheep is um, docile; it's, um, it's easily led, and that's what the people of America are. They're easily led into the way of what wickedness, because of who the ruler, sheeple. That's why the sheep need a shepherd. Sheep need a shepherd to lead them. To keep them out of trouble. To lead them in the right way. Oh, another good definition is um, a person regarded as a protected follower of the Most High. You know, which is going to be who? The elect. Okay. So, um,
that's I believe that's all I have for um, sheep. A person who is let who is too, too easily too easily influenced or led. So that that is talking about you, um, the inhabitants of Babylon the Great. All right, Sirach, chapter ten, um, verse three. An unwise king destroyed his people, but through the prudence of them which are in authority, the city shall be inhabited. Because we don't have the aid. You don't have no choice. You know, we can't, we want this devil up off, you know, off the leadership role, you know, because he's not fit for the, he's not a fit ruler. Verse four, look how you, look what he's doing to the earth, man. He's, he's, Esau is not a fit ruler, man. This in the, the fourth, the third industrial revolution, man, this shit is destroying the earth, man. Toxic chemicals being sprayed in the air. You know, you got most recently that the trains had tipped over, fell over and released toxic chemicals into the air causing forming clouds and poisoning the water supply man it's just esau's is a devil man his way of life is devilish it's it's it's, it's against nature to live like this you know it's not we supposed to conduct a certain way we're supposed to live a certain way and it's not this is not the way man this industrialization is not the way everything was better when you did everything naturally Sirach 10 and 4. The power of the earth is in the hand of Yahweh. And in due time, he will set over it one that is profitable. And that is Yahweh Shah. That is Yahweh Shah. He's that, he's that ruler that the Lord is going to set up over the earth. And he's going to rule it in righteousness. Everything is going to go back to where Yahweh Shah is going to set everything right. Uh, Daniel chapter 7. Start at verse... Um, 13. I saw in the night visions, and behold, one like the Son of Man, which is Yahweh Shah, came with the clouds of heaven, which is the angels, the chariots, and came to the ancient of days, and they brought him near before him. And there was given him dominion and power, glory, and a kingdom that all people, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion, which shall not pass away, and his kingdom, that, that which shall not be destroyed, which is talking about the kingdom of Yahshua Allah, man. That's kingdom that is spoken about that's going to be established when Yahweh Shah returns. You know, he's going to set up Yahweh, Yahweh, Yahweh has set Yahweh Shah up and gave him a kingdom, you know, and he's going to come take it from Esau, you know. I'm going to jump down to verse 18. But the saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever, ever, forever, even forever and ever. So the Lord gave Yahweh Shah a kingdom, and Yahweh Shah is going to share that kingdom with, with, um, with he's gonna the, the elect are gonna be joint heirs with him. So they're gonna inherit, you know, the same thing Yahweh Shah is gonna inherit because Yahweh Shah, you know, he loves he he promised that to those, you know, those men. Sirach chapter 19, verse 4, 19. The the knowledge of the commandments of the Lord is the doctrine of life. So this is talking about the law, statutes, and commandments of the scriptures. You know, a lot of people say that the law is done away with, but it's really not done away with. The law, only certain things about the law is done away with, which is the sacrificial law. We don't have to sacrifice lambs and, you know, things anymore because Yahweh Shah was that ultimate sacrifice according to the book of Hebrews. So Yahweh Shah has that ultimate sacrifice forever. We ain't got to do it no more, you know. And the Lord is not going to do it. He's only going to change certain things, you know. He's He's changing us. He's not changing anything about the law because the law is perfect. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 32, verse 47. I'm going to start at verse 46. It says, this is Moses speaking. It says, and he said unto them, set your hearts up unto all the words which I testify among you this day, which ye shall command your children to observe to do all the words of this law. For if, for, for it is not a vain thing for you. Because it is your life, and through these things ye shall prolong your days in the land, whether ye go over to Jordan to possess it. So Moses made it very clear that doing what the Lord taught us to do is not a vain thing. It is our life. If we do the laws and statutes and commandments, our life actually depends on it. If we don't do it, our life hangs in the balance. So whether we keep the law or not, 
that is the way of life and the way of death. If we keep the law, that's the way of life. If we don't, that's the way of death. And that's the, the cycle of death that our people have been participating in for way too long. Baruch 4 and 1. This is the book of the commandments of the Most High. Now, it just spoke about the commandments, which is what? The laws. You know, thou shalt not mur thou shalt not kill, which means murder. And, you know, thou shalt not have no other gods before me. Don't worship other gods. You know, that's just, you know, two among thousands. I mean, hundreds, you know. And the law that endured forever, that so it endures forever, man. That's literal forever. All they that keep it shall come to life, but such as leave it shall die. And that's why Jake is out here dying. Because they're not keeping the laws. They're not making it to the fullness of their... They're not making it to be 28, 25. You know, most people don't make it past 21. Because what? They're, they're, in, they're, in, they're engaged from their youth. They have been engaged in up into all types of evil because our people are lost they don't know who they are but if they knew who they are they would conduct themselves better according to the laws Sirach 19 and on um, verse 19 the, the knowledge of the commandments of the Lord is the doctrine of life it is the teachings of life it is the, the knowledge of life it is the study of life you want to live keep the commandments Okay, the word doctrine means a body of principles. So it's a principle of law, life. Now it means, do, says dogma. Now let's look up dogma. A set of opinion, a principle held as being firmly established, which is the law. Um, Latin dogma, philo uh, philosophical, uh, forgive me. Philosoph philosophical ten tenet. tenet. From the Greek dogma, dogma, um, generative dogmatus, opinion, tenic, literally that which that which one thinks is true, which is the law. The law is true, you know. The law says commandments is true. Dogma, teaching, belief, conviction, tenet, principle, which is what the scriptures precept. An article of faith. That's a good one. An article of faith. Law, rule, creed. A code of belief. A set of beliefs. Set of principles. Doctrine. Ideology. So it basically means that. Teachings, you know. Dogma. A principle or set of principles laying down by an authority as in control incontrovertibly true forgive me um dogma greek dogma opinion from dokian seem seem good think incontrovertibly incontrovertibly forgive me Okay, so that's what dogma means. It basically means the same thing as doctrine. Okay, from old French doctrine, teaching, doctrine, from Latin doctrina, a teaching body of teachings, learning. You know, the notion is whatever is taught or laid down as true by a master or instructor. Hence, any set of principles held as true, which is what? The law, statutes, and commandments. Because the laws, the law is true. So doctrine means the same thing as the, um, dogma. Okay, um, going back to it, body of principles. So which is what is that? The law, statutes, commandments of the scriptures. Ecclesiasticus chapter nineteen, um, verse nineteen. The knowledge of the commandments of the Lord is the doctrine of life, and they that do things that please Him shall receive the fruit of the tree of immortality. And we will get a taste of that. Through Yahweh Shai, we have access to the to immortality, man, which is everlasting life. Verse 20. The fear of the Lord is all wisdom. So if you want wisdom, fear the Lord. That's the most you know important thing. Fear the Lord. Fear the Heavenly Father. And in all wisdom is the performance of the law. Because if you fear the Lord, you're gonna do what the law says. You're gonna perform the law. And the knowledge of his omnipotency. Which we already got the word omnipotent.
omnipotence. Okay, unlim unlimited divine power, almighty power, all powerful. You know, basically same thing. Omnipotence, all powerfulness, almighty, almightiness, supreme supremacy, preeminence, supreme power, absolute, unlimited power, undisputed, 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 undisputed sway, divine right, dictatorship, totality. Totalism, totalitarianism, invincibility, powerlessness. That's what Yahweh Bash, yeah, that's what Yahweh Bashmel Shah has, man. He has all of those things. And that's what we're trying to get you um you tribes to recognize. Recognize your power source because without you without him, you have nothing. You are nothing, you know. Um I already got Daniel 4 and 7. Did I get Daniel 4 and 7? 17? Let me see. I got a couple more precepts in Lord willing, man. You know, this lesson is edifying. Uh, Daniel 4 and 17. This matter is by the decree of the watchers and the demand by the word of the holy ones to the intent that the living may know that the most high ruleth in the kingdom of men and giveth it to whomsoever he will and setteth up over it the basis of men, the lowest of men, the lowest of the lowest of men. Because what? That's talking about the heathens, Esau and other nations. They are the basis of men. But Israel is going to take over and going to be a great example on how to rule. We're going to show these nations how to rule. And and that's going to start with who? Yahweh Shah. Okay, I got a couple more precepts. Michael 5 and 2. Michael, Michael 5 and 2. It says, gather. It's not gonna, it says, Michael 5 and 2. It says, but thou, Bethlehem, Ephratah, through thou, though thou be little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of thee shall come forth unto me that is to be ruler in Israel, whose going forth have been from old, from of old, the everlasting. Now, who is that talking about? That identif that is talking about our Lord Yahusha. Micah, you know, Matthew 2 and 6. And thou Bethlehem in the land of Judah art not the least among the prince of princes of Judah. For out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people Israel. That's why Herod, Herod the king at that time, he um he tried to put put that child to death because he was threatened by the coming of our Lord Yahusha. When he was a little baby, we was came coming to deliver Israel. Um, he tried to put Yahweh Shai to death. That's why all um, newborns up to the age of two was put to death, and there was a great lamentation in the land, and that was proph prophesied about you know, by I believe the book of Jeremiah. I believe it was Jeremiah Ramoth. No, I could be wrong. No, I know it's in Jeremiah, but I just don't know exactly where that precept is at. I believe it's in the thirties. Jeremiah Jeremiah thirty something, you know. So if you wanted to go here it is. Jeremiah thirty one and fifteen. Thus said Yahweh, a voice was heard in Ramah lamentation and bitter weeping. Rahel weeping for the children, refused to be comforted for her children because they were not. This is um talking about when um Herod um, he killed all the newborns up to the age of two. Let's see. Now, when you, I have the precept Bible. So when you look at this precept, it has the letter Q by it. And Q takes us to Matthew 2 and 17. Let's go there. This just backs up, you know, what I was bringing out through the spirit. How it was limitation in the land. Because Herod killed, you know, all the newborns up to the age of two. That's why Yahweh Shai and um, Mary and um, Joseph had to flee until into Egypt. Micah, no, Matthew chapter 2, verse 20. Wait, 2 and 27? 2 and 17, it's like it. Micah, Matthew 2 and 17. It says... I'm going to start at 16. It says, Then Herod, when he saw that he was mocked of the wise men, was exceedingly wroth, and sent forth and slew all the children that were in Bethlehem and in all the coast thereof from, 
from two years old and under, according to the time which he had diligently acquired of the wise men. Then was fulfilled that which was spoken by Jeremy the prophet, saying, In Ramah was there a voice of voice heard, lamentation and weeping and great mourning, Rachel weeping for her children and would not be comforted because they were not. All right, so that that really backs up the scripture. I read that in my Bible. So, um, I'm going to close it out with this Psalm 75 and 7. It says, but I'm going to start at verse 6. You know what? I'm going to read. Um, I'm going to start at 4. It says, I said unto the fools, deal not foolishly. And to the wicked, lift not up thine horn. Let Lift not up your horn on high. Speak not with a stiff neck. And that's what Esau does. But he don't understand that he was actually put in this position by the Heavenly Father. You know. It says, for promotion cometh neither from the east, nor from the west, nor from the south. But God is the judge. He said, put it down one and set it up another. So that's why a he Asaph was telling Esau, man, he was making that statement to the wicked. Which we know to be Esau and the other nations. Don't 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 be don't be so lifted up with pride. Don't think you're so all powerful and you all strong. Don't lift up your head. Don't be stout. Don't be proud. Because the Heavenly Father is what is who puts you in the position that you are in. He puts you there and he can take you down. You know. So don't don't deal so foolishly. And that's what what does the heathen do? They deal foolishly. They don't deal justly or righteously. They deal foolishly. Because what? They they're, they're heathens, man. They don't understand that that the omnipotency of the heavenly father. So, Lord willing this lesson was edifying. You know, Lord willing you see the important role that the heavenly father plays in everything that goes down in the earth. You know what? I'm going to get it. I'm going to close it out with one last precept. Isaiah 45 and 7. It says, I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create evil. I, Yahweh, do all these things. So he the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, has a heavy influence in the earth. A heavy influence inside the earth. You know, nothing goes down without his uh, approval. The Heavenly Father approves everything that, the, that goes down. So the Heavenly Father proves He allows whatever happens, the Lord allowed it to happen. Uh let's let's go one more precept to put the nail in the coffin. First Corinthians chapter thirteen, verse ten. No. No, it's ten and thirteen. 1 Corinthians 10 and 13. There have no temptation taken you, but such as is coming to man. But the Most High is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able. So that lets you know that the Lord is in control. It says, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape that ye may be able to bear it. So the Heavenly Father not going to put you through nothing that you're not gonna, you can't handle. Whatever he puts you through, you can handle it, you know, through the spirit and power of Yahweh Shah. Very simple. Because the Lord has that influence in the earth. He is the judge, man. He is the ultimate judge. He's the ultimate king. Yahweh Bashim Shah, the Heavenly Father Yahweh, is the ultimate king, man. And who is he set up? Uh actually, you know, through this aid of the Lord. The spirit got me still going. <laughs> uh another precept just popped in my head. Psalms 110 and 1. 
It says, a psalm of David. Yahweh said unto my Lord, Yahweh said unto Yahweh Shai, sit thou at my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool. So the heavenly father Yahweh is telling, telling Yahweh Shai, I'm going to make your enemies your footstool. He's going to do that. The heavenly father Yahweh is going to do that. It says, Yahweh shall send the rod of thy strength out of Zion. The Lord is going to cause who to be strengthened. Israelites. The Lord is the one that gives us strength. The Lord is the one that does everything. He's, he's omnipotent. He does any and everything, man. Verse 3. Oh, he says, Thou, Yahweh shall send the rod of thy strength out of Zion. Because what the Lord is going to do, he's going to strengthen Israelites. Most importantly, the elect of Israel. It says, rule thou in the midst of thine enemies. Israel is going to rule in the midst of thine enemies, of the, her enemies. And it's going to start with Yahweh Shai when he returns. Thy people shall be willing in the day of thy power. The Lord is going to endow certain men with power. The Lord is going to be the one that's going to give people power, man. And the beauties of holiness from the wound of the morning, thou hast to do of thy youth. Um, Isaiah 40. Isaiah 40 and verse 28. Has thou not heard? Has thou it's like it, has thou not known? Has thou not heard that the everlasting power, Yahweh, the creators of the end of the, end of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary, there is no searching of his understanding. He giveth power to the faint. This backs up Psalms uh, uh 110. And to them that have no might, he increases strength. And that's not talking about just anybody. That's talking about Israelites. Because we are the ones that are weak. We the ones that are being smitten and have nobody to deliver us. You know? We the ones that are constantly always a victim. Or a suspect. It says, He giveth power to the faint, and to them that have no might, he increases strength. Even the youth, youth shall faint and be weary, and the young man shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon Yahweh, because why are we waiting on Yahweh? Because he's the one that's going to give us strength shall renew their strength they shall mount up with wings as eagles they shall run and not be weary and they shall walk and not faint let's see what that says in nlt it's isaiah 40 and um 40 29 in nlt it says he gives power to the weak and strength to the powerless even you shall become weak and be tired and tired and young men will fall in exhaustion but those who trust in yahweh will find new strength they shall soar high on soar high on wings like eagles they shall run and not grow weary they shall walk and not faint so that's basically the same thing you know getting a more a little more descriptive you know in today's term we're gonna find new strength in who yahweh by shimel shot man so with that man lord willing brothers edified with this lesson you know uh that's all i had through the spirit i'm gonna close out by giving all praises and glory to yahweh by hashem yahweh shot by hashem rakaha kodash double on us and to the apostles and the elders of great millstone who will teach well must peace love and salutation to all brothers doing this work in truth and sincerity want to say shalom call me asha'allah wa'abababa 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 wa